Hi, this is Bitluni and today I'll be sharing my experience with my new pick and place machine. So around last summer when I sold many of my VGA boards, I decided I really need a pick and place machine to assemble them. Since I didn't have much spare money, I bought the light blazer, which comes as a kit for below $2,000. As far as I know, it's uh, the only pick and place machine that you get for this money with uh, dual vision system and uh, tool change. So around August, I started to assemble the machine with the help of Aaron Christopher, but then I did a huge mistake where I had to replace a part on the controller and that delayed everything. And after that, I was super busy with other stuff. But now that we are all in a lockdown, I decided I will finish it and uh, start assembling a few PCBs. So last Sunday, as you have probably seen, I finally managed to um, configure the machine to pick and place a simple board like this here. That helped me really a lot to get familiar with the software and I was able just within days to configure it to uh, pick and place complete panels with uh, several different sized components. With each panel I improved the settings such that I was able to do other stuff while the pick and place machine was working. Just within one week the machine was running. I was even able to ship the first boards to you guys. So now I'm able to restock quite quickly and you guys only have to wait for the postal service to actually work again. If you guys are interested in getting one of these and filling your lockdown time, I managed to get a discount code for 5% off and I linked everything in the description below, all the tools and uh, stuff that I used during the complete build process. Enjoy the montage and uh, I will talk later about some further details. The kit was delivered by FedEx. All the parts come in labeled bags and the instructions are online. In addition to that you need a 24 volt power supply, some shielded cables and some tools. I got an MDF plate from the hardware store as a base. So let's get started with the assembly. This is done. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much, Aaron. Anyone subscribe to Aaron's channel? A link in the description. <laughs> he really helped me. We did it in less than 24 hours. Right. Pick, pick and place machine done. Yeah, except for the cameras are not uh, mounted and we have to put some <laughs> more power and uh, yeah, maybe screw some parts on. But I think it's. It counts. Yeah, it's good. From that point I continued on my own, installing the cameras and the vacuum pump. And this is what happened. Okay guys, you can clip this, this part, how I release the magic smoke. 
something smells something smells here oh no oh no oh no oh no something smelling the board doesn't come on what happened no okay time for debugging Still during the stream, we were able to identify what's broken and what the cause was. The last thing that I did before that happened is to connect the pump. Usually you are supposed to be using the MOSFETs that were included to control the pump and the valve of the vacuum system. But I wanted to check the polarity of the motor and connected it directly to the controller board. And that was a huge mistake. Whenever you power a coil like in the motor of the pump, it charges up and when you turn it off, it releases a high voltage spike. In this case, the body diode of the MOSFET would act like a flyback diode and protect the controller board from this high voltage peak. Here, but I didn't use the MOSFET. So the high voltage peak traveled through the USB to the PC and to the camera back. I suppose the power protection of the USB host that was affected didn't trigger enough, so the camera was destroyed. But also the FTDI chip which manages the USB on the controller board released its magic smoke. This is the actual FTDI chip. You can clearly see there is a hole. Fortunately though the PC survived this assault. I just had to restart it. I ordered a replacement FTDI and uh, two replacement cameras from eBay and fixed that in a later session. To not screw up again, I added this MOSFET switchboard between the vacuum system and the controller board. It uses optocouplers as protection. But the shipped MOSFETs would probably also do. As mentioned before, in the last 10 hour stream I was able to configure the machine to pick and place the first board and here's my genuine joy. So the task of a pick and place machine is to put single surface mount components on the PCB. It uses a vacuum pump and this valve here to suck in air through this nozzle here. And the size of the tip of the nozzle differs for different component sizes. So we have like super huge ones and super small ones for uh, the small resistors and capacitors. One feature of the light placer is the automatic tool change, which is quite handy because then the machine can switch to the nozzle that is needed automatically and you don't need to do it manually. So while homing, the machine is moving until it reaches the mechanical end stops. But this isn't 100% precise. So we have an extra feature that it tracks down automatically. Another feature is to track down the fiducials on your uh, panel that you want to pick in place. You import your centered file into the software and the fiducials help to find the placement of the board on your machine here. The components usually come on a paper or a plastic strip. In the light placer software you define where a strip is placed on your table. 
The downlooking camera will then find the small holes of the tape and will pick up the component next to it. Since this is also done using the downlooking camera, you have to specify uh, the filters to track down these holes. And you define this for each type of tape. What I'm missing though is an extra type that you could define for your individual trays that you have made. I end up 3D printing this tray that I made specifically for the components needed uh, for this PCB. But it took me quite some iterations before it was finally working. This is a cross section of the tray. So I can simply slide in the tapes like this here and they will be hold in place. Since the main IC comes in a tube and I don't have a vibrator set up yet, uh, I also designed this tray here where I can simply place the individual ICs in there. And right next to it, I designed like holes that are detected as the white tape. It would be nice to be able to specify a different detection for, for this type of tray. But at the end, uh, black and white markers come really handy to fix your tray to work with all the tape types. This kind of setup also helps using complete component reels. Uh, I can simply pull the tape through once I have used the components. My reel holder is just improvised. It's just a box and a steel rod that I put through. Since complete reels of ICs can get really expensive, I have also like just only pieces of tapes here. The tapes are protected by a foil. A lesson I learned is to only pull the foil away once everything is set up and only as far as needed. Otherwise you will end up with a component graveyard like I did there. The uplooking camera is currently only used to calibrate the rotational bubble of the nozzles. It would be nice to have a correction feature for uh, the components that are picked up. As far as I know, this feature is supported by the OpenPNP software, which also works with the light placer once you switch the direction of the uh, Z-axis. I've installed it already, but have no experience with this whatsoever. And uh, for now, it works for me like that. But I will keep you updated. <laughs>